Hi, this is Charlie Pantano. I'm the emissions engineer for Eastern Manufacturing, otherwise known as Eastern Catalytic. We'd like to talk about some of the uh, installation procedures when installing the converter. You should check the converter for any loose debris. Typically when converters go bad, they can either break or shatter and produce debris that may fall back further into the exhaust system, in particular uh, getting caught inside the muffler or tight bends within the exhaust tubing itself. So it's very important after removing the converter to look down the exhaust tubing either with an inspection light or actually tap on the exhaust system with a mallet, rubber mallet or sand hammer to make sure you found all the debris. Uh, once you're comfortable that that debris is gone, it's okay to install the uh, new converter. Before that installation though, it's always a good idea to lay both the old and new converter out on a bench and just compare them. Make sure you've got the right product, the O2 sensors are in the right location, and you've actually received the uh, right part in your packaging. Uh, to install the converter back on the vehicle, it's basically a reverse order of how you took it off. Uh, always use new hardware and new gaskets, and always replace any gasket that you've uh, taken off further upstream from the converter, in addition to the ones that you're uh, mounting just for the converter. Uh, do not use any silicone products. Silicone will actually outgas and, and produce a product that hurts the O2 sensors. After the installation is complete, you should actually reset any engine trouble codes that you see. Start the vehicle up and idle it for a bit. Check for leaks by placing a, a rag over the exhaust. A, a wet rag is suitable. Or you could actually smoke test it if you're a garage and have a smoke machine. All those are acceptable ways to check for leaks. Allow the vehicle to cool down. And you also may need a few drive cycles of the vehicle before the engine check uh, code actually goes away. I'd like you to look at the, the slide uh, very closely. Uh, in addition to warming the vehicle up, some things do happen within the converter upon that first startup. It's very important to know that the matting used to hold the ceramic substrate in the converter is basically shipped in a cold state and has not been run or seen any high temperatures until you start that vehicle up for the first time. The matting is designed to hold the ceramic substrate, but it does require some temperature or uh, heat to actually uh, expand the matting and remove some of the polymers that are inside of it. This chart basically represents what happens the first time you start a vehicle. The lower graph on the chart that you see declining and then rising up is exactly what happens when you start the vehicle for the first time. The matting that holds the substrate is actually looser than when it's first installed at the factory. So at the, at the very first startup for the vehicle, you actually lose some holding force during that warm-up time. What's important to know about this is that during that time, if the vehicle is actually driven or exposed to highway speeds, the matting is not holding the block as, as tightly as it should and you really risk a, a portion of the drive time where that block could come loose. Once you've gotten that first cycle, the car's gotten up to operating temperature, the matting's expanded, and the upper part of the chart, you can see what happens to the matting after that first drive cycle. So it's very important for installers and uh, private installers to make sure they warm the vehicle up. Uh, if, if you have the time, do it a couple times. And then finally, uh, deliver the car to the customer and uh, it should provide uh, long-term use on the highway.